roundtable discussion. Uh, my name is Lillian Magallanes. Feel free to call me Lil. Uh, do, don't bother to say my last name, but I actually work for Bluebeam as a software company. I came from the industry um, as BIM coordination and project manager, and I needed a job seven years ago um, because my project got fitted out. And seven years later, I'm still here. I actually just moved into a new role about a year ago as program manager. Um, for community development. So I really focus on building industry, um, you know, industry organization partnerships with Bluebeam. And I love it because I still get to build, I get to plan and I get to execute and I still am able to connect with everyone in the industry, which is, um, to be honest, part of my favorite part of my job is connecting with others. Not that I dislike my Bluebeam peers, I really do, but there's just something magical when you connect outside of your own colleagues. Um, so I want to go ahead and have each one of the um, subject matter experts introduce themselves and then we'll get into the first question of the day. So first I'm going to go ahead and start with Jeff followed by Todd and then lastly by Travis. So take it away Jeff. Well thank you Lil and thanks for everybody for joining us today. We're really uh, excited to be here and you know, for those who don't know me, my name is Jeff Sample. I'm uh, the director of strategic accounts at ESUB. I'm also a member of the Contact crew and the construction dorks. So been out there and around the way quite a bit. Um, remote work has been something I've been doing for years, but built my career on being in touch with people and in person actually, doing a lot of networking at events, speaking, et cetera. And so this, this new world and the opportunity to talk to people about how do we get more out of it? And um, I will echo Sean McGuire there. I'm one of the burnout folks. Um, I think I'm burnout for mm -hmm. a different reason though. I'm a content creator as it were. You look burned um, out, does that make a difference? <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> I mean, I grew the beard back, Sean, cause I am just too tired to shave anymore, man. <laughs> Let's be honest. Um, truth and transparency, mm -hmm. my, my, my party on the top, and it's just all party at this point. Um, so, but no, for me as a content creator, uh, you know, uh, you'll get a lot of candid, I hope here, candid feedback from us is um, I'm struggling as a content creator. Um, when we're talking to you guys in person and when we're standing on stage, I can see your faces. I can feel what's going on. We, we know when we're on a good point and when we should dive in and when the hell we should get out of it. And there just isn't that feedback loop in this. It's, it's hard right now, even with all you guys with your, there's just a few of you and I can see if you're nodding heads or not or agreeing. And, that's, it's really tough for us to get that back. And, uh, you know, not to equate it to music, but like without the crowd, why do you do it? And you kind of, it ends and I used to be amped up. I could go for hours at shows and I'm done at the end of the day now. A, a good hour and a half broadcast and I'm done. So I, I really want to lean into you guys and, and, you know, that value, the, the measure that success, those things, that feedback loop, how do we do that better? Um, and then on the flip side, what are we seeing that's, you know, that's innovating that is getting us interested. So I'm always interested in what Sean's up to with R and D and trying new stuff and what, you know, you guys might've done Kyle, what you're doing in, in coordination meetings that got people jazzed up before. So that's a little bit about me and a little bit about why I'm here and, and I'm excited. So Todd, over to you, man. All right, cool. Well, thanks Jeff. Uh, so I, I go a lot of what uh, Jeff is feeling for sure. Uh, so I'm Todd Wyant. I'm director of creative marketing over at Applied Software, and I host the Bridging the Gap podcast, which focuses on construction and MEP innovation. Um, so also content generator. We used to do a ton of in-person events, and we would put on a big uh, in-person trade show as well every year, MEP Force. And COVID has thrown all of our uh, content and marketing plans for a big uh, loop. And so, you know, how do we retool in this virtual space and, and get the engagement? It's super hard, as Jeff said, to, to get that feedback back. Uh, and so I, one of the things that I've really come to embrace during COVID is let's just try things. Let's just throw out some innovation if it succeeds, great. If it doesn't, then you learn something that you didn't already know. So, uh, you know, seeking out, being intentional and getting advice and, and input and asking, being willing to really put yourself out there and, and ask for honest feedback is really important for all of us as whether you're on the content creator side or you're attending these events because nobody's going to know how to make them better unless people start really giving the honest feedback of, 
hey, this was just a terrible webinar. This was super boring. Or this was a virtual event and it went really well. Or, uh -huh, you know, I thought it was going to be a virtual event and turned out a webinar. There's all these different uh, event types in this virtual space that never existed before. Webinar, virtual conferences, live podcasting. There's, there's everything. So I think it's really important to know just what you're getting yourself into when you're going into an event um, and, and being, being open to just share that feedback. I'm excited about the conversation that we're going to have today. All right. Over to you, Travis. Um, my turn. Uh, I'm Travis Voss, um, otherwise known as the original Travis or Travis Prime. I've been, I've been liking that one lately. Um, I'm the leader of innovative technologies here at Mechanical Incorporated here in Northern Illinois. Um, I, I was asked to be on this panel, um, you know, as I, as I came into industry, um, one of the, the duties that was kind of, or one of the requirements of my job was to, to start speaking on behalf of mechanical at, at different events. And somehow I kind of weaseled my way into this, this weird title, this weird thing that Nathan likes to call me in, in thought leadership. So out of that, um, kind of came the, the role of content creator and whatnot. Um, and then you know, so, so I was doing blogs and I would do, you know, like everybody else said, being at the events, doing speaking, um, engaging at the, the happy hours and in the outings and stuff like that. And that was kind of the impetus for, for Jeff and Jonathan and Trent uh, Leinenbach. You know, we, we, we've always had this little group, you know, I think everybody here would, would classify as, as a construction dork. So at all these events, we'd always find the, these groups of people, uh, like-minded, passionate people. And we were talking about, uh, technologies and, and implementation and, and different workflows and processes um, in, in our little group that, that started up the Construction Dork podcast realized that, that you know, as much as we love everybody's industry events, we're not saying anything against that, but our, our favorite part was kind of the networking part. Um, so the, the intent of the podcast was, you know, to, to get a group of people together uh, for an hour and, and try to recreate these events. And I know everybody, you know, some people have done virtual happy hours. So it was along the same lines. Um, and then we just tried to um, sometimes successfully, not sometimes not so successfully stick to a topic um, to try to make it more of a podcast feel. But um, we turned it in into, instead of a, you know, a traditional record and release podcast, we, we do use the, the Zoom webinar feature to try to invite some, some live interaction. And so we get kind of that, hopefully we get some of that you know, sitting around a, a table at a bar or, or at a, you know, in the, the vendor part of the, of the conference and, and having these, these same sort of conversations hopefully targeted around a topic. So um, I, I'm really looking forward to this as well. You know, one of, the, one of the things I always say when I give a presentation is I try to keep my presentation short enough to open up for at least 50% of my time is Q&A because I enjoy learning back from the crowd as much as I do presenting to it. So um, I'm hoping to, to, grab some tidbits from from everybody else and, and hopefully we can all leave a, a little bit smarter awesome thank you jeff thank you todd and thank you travis so um as all three of you guys are doing a podcast construction dorks you know bridging the gap and the content crew i have a question for you guys you know as content producers what or who defines what is a good engagement um, is it, you know, is it the audience? Is it, you know, what you understand what the industry is looking for? You know, let's start with Todd first. You're Let me mute. come off mute. <laughs> come off. <laughs> Throw somebody out. Who? Oh, I think he's holding the, the space bar. <laughs> and now it doesn't Can't come off. Can you hear me now? Uh, for a second, and then I think you went muted back again. This never happens when we're live. Next. <laughs> actually, let's just move on. <laughs> yes. Can you so, hear yes. me now? Okay. Yes, yes. It won't let me actually come off, but I can hold the space bar down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, That's great okay. question. I well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's an interesting question on from the podcasting front on what classifies engagement. And I'd love to 
I'm curious about Jeff and Travis's response to this. Uh, because, you know, you get the downloads on the back end, so you can see which ones are resonating more as far as that perspective. But for me, the last several months, LinkedIn has actually been kind of my go-to place to see what's resonating based on, you know, who's sharing it, what are they sharing, and then what are they, what little snippet of the podcast are they picking up on? Because that's just as informative to me of what they're talking about from that episode. Because I go in with it, something that stands out to me from that episode. And sometimes that's what other people are talking about. And then most of the time, it's something totally different than what I thought was the cool part of the episode that gets people's attention and gets them talking and sharing and liking and posting about it. Um, and so that's always really cool and surprising to me of what gets people to respond um, and what motivates them to actually then share the content to somebody else. Um, and that's always super interesting. But LinkedIn has been my, my big go-to recently. Jeff? So I have a couple of different perspectives on it. This is kind of interesting because I'm probably one of the ones who's been podcasting for the longest at this point with the content crew being around for as long as it has. And, you know, and actually being on the side of that production team that, that built it and did all the measurements and looked at what, you know, Todd's looking at. Um, from that, we really looked at listens and downloads and subscriptions and, you know, that kind of piece. But uh, as I've gone down the road now and done more with the dorks and a couple of other things that I've had the, the, the pleasure of being a part of, I've switched because you know, I kind of feel like that's the external piece for us. And for me, it's become this internal, what part of it did I enjoy the most and get the most out of anymore? And it's, um, you know, I'll take the dorks, for instance, like, it's been a new unique experience for me to take a role as a more of a moderator in that one, more of a... Um, someone who's stimulating the conversation and getting it going and getting, letting people tell their stories. And that has become all of a sudden a bigger, I don't know, feedback loop for me is more watching somebody hit their own stride and start talking and disappear to the back for a while. And so I know we're looking at downloads on the other ones and whatnot, but for me, it's really, I've started to grade at least now on how I felt about it. Um, and I'm starting to not look at the comments, et cetera. Um, cause it doesn't help me. I, 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 maybe I just don't want it, but you know, it's kind of like the Twitter thing. Any of you who you, know, <laughs> you watch somebody who's huge on Twitter, whoever talks about it, everybody know I'm a Joe Rogan fan, but like Rogan won't read the comments because it will take you into this weird world. And I don't know, I sort of kind of grab from that. So for me, that's what it is. But also then, you know, if I ever do get somebody who's you know, quoting us or, you, you know, LinkedIn, Todd is a great place for that because that's usually where somebody felt pushed enough by what they heard or inspired enough by what they heard to share it. And that's where I'm like, oh, that's, that worked. Mm -hmm. Jeff, do you feel like by not, I, I definitely understand, you know, not reading the comments can be a little bit hard because you can, you're so connected and you're so close to in the content that you're producing, do you think that you're missing an opportunity to have engage, engagement conversations? Or do you think that by entertaining those comments that it may just kind of go off to, you know, off to a place that you probably don't want to have a conversation? I'm curious to know. Um, so I do engage with the comments. I, I try to um, a little bit, but I try to take it at a grain of salt. And I do try to stay away from certain ones for sure. Um, and I think you're right because you're missing an, yeah, I stay away from McGuire's for sure. Um, but I, but, but I do think you're missing an opportunity to engage with people. Um, and then in sometimes it, it, you know, especially on the, on the crew side of things, when we're interviewing somebody, um, it's a different, they, they're looking for a different outcome than I'm looking for. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, th th let's be honest, it's a great way to get your name out there, whether you're a software provider or whether you're a construction technologist, it's a great way to push your brand. Um, so it is kind of, it's, I don't want to call it self-indulgent, but it's a little <laughs> bit self-indulgent at times. So, yeah. um, um, so I try to, and I try to look for the good ones, you know, um, and the fun ones there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Travis? Yeah, um, you know, we, we're still relatively new in the podcast game, so it, it, we were taking a lot of learnings from Jeff, um, in, both as his role on the content crew and then with his role with ESUB, um, because we do ours as, as a, a webinar kind of format, you know, 
you know, we're all, we're construction people, so we're led by KPIs, so we like numbers, right? So, you know, we're, we're asking him constantly how many people have registered and what's a good number and everything. And, and, you know, it was a little disheartening at the beginning to realize that, you know, if you get half of the people who signed up to actually at least pop in for a minute or two, that that's a successful webinar, you know, that, that was a little disheartening. Um, and then we also do the, you know, we, like you talked about, we, on the back end, you know, we're, we're constantly um, watching the analytics on the website and, and the video and the, and the downloads and everything like that. Um, but I've definitely, you know, with the last, you know, whatever, we're a half dozen in maybe um, with the first three, I was heavy on the numbers, but the, the second three, it's more, it is more kind of that, it's more of a touchy feely. How did the engagement feel? Um, so um, in the opportunity we have, or we're, we're a topic where we're inviting some public comment and we get out and we, we get it on Twitter and LinkedIn. Those are the good ones. Um, you, when you get to, some conversation going, you get some buzz. Um, I'm with Jeff. Um, I, you know, just deeply on a personal level, I hate drama. So anything negative, anything like that, I, I, I step away from as fast as possible. Um, but any, any sort of, you know, positive discourse or, you know, even, even friendly disagreements and stuff like that, those, those are fun to kind of, to get the engagement. Um, you know, he, you know, he was talking about Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan likes to, to point out that a lot of times social media is um, designed to feed us things we don't like just because it keeps us engaged. Uh, but if we can, mm -hmm if we can stay engaged and, and have those, those open discourses on, on things that we even don't agree on that, that's like, that's what I consider like a positive engagement. And that's where, you know, again, the construction dorks was kind of, we blossomed out of was to, to try to get grasp that conversational feel um, that, that we've been missing, not being able to go to the events. And Travis, you said something that definitely resonated with me is you're not really looking at those numbers as you were at the very beginning. Instead, you're kind of looking at how did the engagement feel? And I'm curious to know, how do you measure engagement, you know, or the feeling of engagement? How is that measure? How, do, how can you say, you know, I'm going to continue to produce, you know, X amount of construction dark ep episodes because, you know, it, it felt right in this, this feeling is, it's, it's a number. How do you do that? I'm yeah. Curious. I mean, it, it, it is kind of that, you know, that, that, Goldilocks zone, like, like Jeff was saying, if I enjoyed the conversation, I got something out of it. Um, I, I think that, you know, not that I'm a representative of everybody in a construction technologist role, but, you know, we all, you know, we, we all probably engage with the, the, the conversations kind of similarly. So we, whatever we, what I find interesting, I hope, I do hope that other people find interesting, interesting. Um, so there's that, but then also the numbers have to back it up. If, if we do a, um, a podcast that I think is incredible and I go out to our Squarespace site and I look at the analytics and four people have clicked on the link, you know, that's, <laughs> that's obviously I did, we did something wrong. Um, so, mm -hmm. so you have to find that, that right level. Um, the hard part is kind of, you know, when you, when you're doing a presentation and you look out over in the audience, you see how many people there, you see how many eyeballs are looking back at you. And we, we talked about this with the music and, and whatnot, but just, just releasing that out into the, the cyber world is, is a little unnerving because even the, the analytics on websites, you don't really know how many people listened all the way through and, and to Todd's mm -hmm. point, you know, you can start to suss out a little bit on what part they engaged with, but it, it really is hard to do it in that, that, um, you know, that zone where there's just, there is no feedback coming back out. So you, you just kind of, you have to, in your own mind, like, okay, what numbers am I acceptable? Do I find acceptable, you know, based on the last piece of content I related, or I, I you know, if we, is there a 10% uptick in people who viewed it, you know, then I would say that's probably a positive trend, you know, if it's uh, but then on the other side, it's like, if, well, okay, we went down 5%, is that bad? Or do we just hit a bad week or, you know, what it is, mm -hmm. it's really, it is really difficult to feel out. I think it's really important as a content generator to have fun with it and to enjoy the conversation and to enjoy what you're putting out. Cause if you're not enjoying it, people are going to pick up on that and they're going to feel that vibe right away and they're, they're going to tune out. So even you could have the best content in the world, but you're not having fun. Nobody else is going to be listening. Nobody's going to be engaging with it. You have to do something that is enjoyable to you mm -hmm. or at least find an angle on something that you, is enjoyable. Yeah, really great point. And I kind of wanted to start talking about sort of the the in-person engagement versus the virtual engagement. So we we all know, and, I, and from what everyone's you know introduction said, you know, there's definitely a magic when we have in-person engagement. 
we meet someone, oftentimes, you know, we're not as intentional to want to, you know, connect with the person as we are in a virtual setting. But do you think, and this is for all three of you guys, do you think it's possible to recreate that magic of that in-person engagement um, in a VR setting, in a, in a virtual setting, you know, and if so, how? And, and, and do we think that VR has any future play in, in, in the way that we're connecting today, you know, in this COVID life? Um, I'll have it, Jeff, we'll have you start here. Ooh, that, that's a really good one. Um, it's tough. I, I think first and foremost, no, in-person can't really be completely recreated. Um, I think it's genetic and we can, we can get into the argument of this, but I think we are social beings and there is a level of connection that is required to be in person for that to really fully connect um, and really fully feel some of that. However, I think there's an opportunity here and, and you know, Jonathan, I might pull you in here at some point because you've been talking about this, but of really actually doing the virtual thing and you know, trying to have us all inside of a platform somehow um, it gets down to, you know, there's some, some hurdles, but I, I think it has a play. Um, I just don't know that any of us is willing at this point to really go there. Uh, I, I, that might be because we, we just don't want, I, I think if we go there, we might be saying like, okay, this is over for a while. And we might, we're, we're not all Google that says we're going to work remote till the end of 2021. Like, screw it. That's where the virus is. Which by the way, if you didn't notice, that's what they did. That. Can I chime in on that? Yeah, course, please. I yeah. wanted you to. I wanted to draw you <laughs> in. Man. I, I've been so like when I started consulting with everybody it was right about March. So I have clients that I've never actually met, um, and a lot of champions in different places that I've never actually met. And one of the things I notice is everybody gets distracted. Like you'll be at one of these and you'll be distracted by the 50 things going on around you. But if you go into like a virtual meeting, like an actual virtual space that all the distractions turn off. It's actually the opposite. It's really, really intense. If you go into um, like big screen beta is what I've been using as kind of my flagship to have these meetings because it's free and easy. You put on the VR, you go into big screen beta and you are you are one-on-one -on -one because you're both engaged and it, that avatar as silly as it is because it's like a guy with a ball cap that's smiling. It's still you're, you're not in your room with your kids running behind you, the dog's running underneath you, the pets are crawling on you. You know, you're kind of really engaged in that. And I think that that's really helpful. We've done a couple where we've done like a screen cast along with us just being in the virtual space and it shuts off the outside world in a way that's like being in a room. So I really think it's a, I think it's a, a play that we can make to, to kind of do that. I'm just, I'm really struggling with inside of those spaces. How do you show good content? You know, how do you, how do you do those things? And hopefully they get better at it. Cause as the avatars have like, last one I went into the avatars finally had hands. Um, so you could make hand gestures at one another, which was awesome. Um, and naturally everybody did that hand gesture. Um, <laughs> yeah. but, but th I mean, I think that's really where, um, I think it's really important, especially as we have these teams like are all over the nation to have some way to, to not end up with all this distraction. You know, I mean, I seriously do have like three screens going as we're talking and I know you guys, some of you have the same thing. Terry's looking at like two different announcements, I think at the same time. <laughs> but that, that's what my thoughts are. I, hey, I took that down, big screen beta. We're gonna have to do a test on that. I got the riff running again, so. That's awesome. Um, I kind of want to uh, kind of come back to you, Travis, on something you had said earlier in, in your introduction and something that I've seen this in person and, and I'm starting to kind of see this again in virtual. But um, and my question is, you know, how do we, you know, I, I've noticed in the industry and, and, and this is I know you don't like drama, Travis, but we're going to have to push, you know, some some things. Um, I, in the industry, let's be honest, there are cliques, you know, there's definitely cliques of people, you know, that run in the same circles. Um, and there's, there's nothing wrong with them. Um, oftentimes, when you try to, you know, come into this said clique of people that know each other, it's really difficult. And I've, I'm starting to see that also happening on the virtual setting. Um, I know that there's different engagement in person, you know, how, you know, how can we combat that? How can we, from someone that's an outsider, 
you know, join the click or be part of it to be inclusive. I know that, you know, inclusivity is, is a really hot topic, you know, in the industry today. But how can we how can we make better steps forward to, you know, be inclusive, to you know, avoid having virtual clicks? You know that you're full of really good questions today because you know I was going to piggyback off on the, the VR thing too and, and mm-hmm. part of it is the is is exactly that um, you know in person at least you know if I see Lil and Sean talking to Caitlin and Troy like I, I know Lil and Sean so I feel a little more comfortable and I'll, I'll interject myself into that conversation if we're at a, at a conference it's, it's definitely harder to do that virtually online even in a, in a breakout room you know because um, you, you don't have that group that you can kind of sidle up into. Um, as far as in, in, so then online, you have to be much more intentional, right? And we, we've used that word a couple of times where you have to initiate the contact. You, you have to reach out. And, and for some people who, who may be a little bit more, you know, um, you know, socially inept, what we talked about is being the dorks or, you know, um, a little shy or whatever, that, that, is, that is a little unnerving and it's a little hard. Um, but I, I think that the only way that you're really going to kind of, um, combat that is by having people, um, you know, I'll point to myself and I'll, I'll point to Jonathan and, and Todd and Jeff because I know them pretty well from being in the circuit. And Sean, I'd put you there too. Like we we are just kind of people, people. Like, we, you know, we'll just walk up and talk to anybody. Anybody walk up and talk to us. And, and I think that you need people, we need people like that are like us to continue to, to project that voice out there to welcome in more people, to, to be, um, intentional the other way you know you know maybe what i should do after this is 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 capture some of these names that i see that maybe i haven't connected on linkedin and, and, and reach in, out to them and, and start the conversation that way so that so that the you know i i don't think that clicks are bad and i think that you know most of us in the industry can can cross over clicks pretty well but those clicks need to be pushing outwardly more now instead of mm-hmm. kind of waiting for people to to sidle up to their huddle at the bar yeah, I agree with that. I also think it's an interesting time on from a different perspective of it that it, it can, these virtual breakout rooms can actually help to provide a forum for people to break into different groups that they wouldn't naturally go up to at a big conference. Because everybody's, we're all the same size square here where, where you have the same ability to unmute yourself or not find the mute button or, you know, have mute trouble. Uh, so it kind of, it humanizes everybody in a way that it, it maybe not in an in-person event. Yeah. And I think that if you're doing a webinar, if you're doing like Lil's role right now, you do have to be more intentional. Um, you know, it's not like, uh, being at a conference where you have the conference runner going around trying to encourage people to speak up. Like if you are, if you are Lil and you see somebody in the chat box or you see somebody that's, that's not actively engaging or, or hasn't spoken and is kind of, you can see their eyes are drifting off to another screen now then like you have to, as the moderator, engage that person and draw them. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah. Intentionality yes. is key. Yeah. Well, I want to, I want to, I want to like, so we're talking about tips, tricks, new things to do. I have this whole idea that's been bouncing around in my head because I'm the one who goes to like, I signed up in the beginning for everything and I'm, I'll call myself out like the AC game changers from, from you guys, Todd, like I signed up for all that. Cause like day one, I'm like, well, shit, I have nowhere to go. I might as well start watching. <laughs> stuff, right? Well, I had no idea my life was going to look the way it does right now. Like I, I have blocks upon blocks of meetings. I, I barely get, I had to pause you guys to run and open the door for someone like to take care of things for me. Cause I can't, I don't have time. I, and I didn't see that coming. And so I don't go to any of those. I think from now on out, like when you sign up for something, there should be not only what you're signing up for, but like, are you planning to be engaged? Or are you just signing up to get the freaking recording? Because th- those are two separate roles of people. So that, you know, kind of like an honest intentionality. And I would love it if you signed up for this to like, and say, I'm going to honestly prepare. Like I'm going to be engaged. This is one I'm going to, or this is, hey, this is just one I want to know what the heck's going on out there. So at some point I'm going to try and listen to it at two times speed later on. Yeah. Well, and I, I want to point out too that Kyle, that. yeah, go ahead, Sean. Sorry. You know, it, it seems, you know, going through a lot of these, the smaller the group, the more interactive you're going to get. Uh, whatever, anytime you get above like 15 or, or even, well, 15 is probably the tops. Um, you're going to get people who just don't chime in and just like have it be on the background. Um, but I'd say this this is probably a good way of getting more people involved and, and bridging and getting the group uh, built out uh, simply by you know 
putting yourself out there, having having stuff like the the Dorkathons, um, inviting people to to do happy hour with you. Happy hour is stupid, um, but it's a good way to still you know talk to you guys, which you don't get to do anymore in 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 real time. Um, I do have one comment about you. You need better marketing though, Travis, because like I, I consider myself like friends of all the people on that podcast or your your Zoom thing. I don't even know what it is, man. I don't even know what goes <laughs> well, on. I've it's never, gonna it's gonna kick off here in about an hour. So <laughs> I see I see the Twitter link after I'm like, oh, there goes another yeah. one. All right, well maybe the next one. Uh, that go. that is one one of the things that that we were talking about on our pre call when I was talking to in Todd and. Todd and I asked the or Todd asked the question like how do you how do you drive that more engagement and we do need to do a better job. Um, our podcast is only ever other every other week, so it's not like a, a super set schedule. But you you have to promote. You have to be self promoting. You have to be you know a little bit uh, self centered there and, and kind of and pushing that out there. Um, but but on the other hand too, like we you know Kyle asked the question what what preference and content. You know I definitely think that video is the is the preferred method I think right now because people like to see you speak in here but you know we we try to make that a live event but we also have to be okay with people consuming it afterwards and when when they know that they can have that more more attention focus um, but yeah we're, we're not we're not super great on promoting ourselves before the recording happens which probably <laughs> would make our numbers better well the other thing about content it seems like we're, we're getting a lot of content of people in front of their computer screens in their home offices um, is anybody branching out and showing content like from a job site or from the fab shop or, you know, even their, their, you know, their, their CAD department or whatever, um, you know, construction is still going on. And yet a lot of us are just sitting back here having to kind of interact in this way. The, the things that are interesting to me are, are not any more of the things behind the desk. It's what else is out there. Mm-hmm. And I think like that will drive better numbers and better response rate and better interest from, from people who are out there. Um, trying to get more education and trying to reach out and trying to seem normal as best they can. Yeah, if you want to go ahead and unmute yourself, I think that's a really good question from Sean. You know, feel free to kind of share, you know, your responses. Yeah, Kyle, you go on location, right? Um, I think I've I seen been going. Yeah. I mean, yeah, more so. I've been home. I've been getting other people to go on location for me um, a little bit more in the past couple of weeks. But I would say on the just a project side, we've been getting more engagement virtually from owners and other subs where they're not going on job sites. So now we're using the 360 cameras, drone photography, whatever, and they're actually asking for it and they're logging into it. So we're getting them, you know, in that system and comfortable viewing it remotely. Um, we even had a superintendent that was in quarantine. He actually didn't have COVID, but he was in quarantine and we we're doing job walks every day and he was just running the job site from his from his house, which, you know, is good for us for a certain amount. But um, I, I definitely agree with getting more content out there. Like no one wants to just stare at a screen. It's tough too, because I'm looking at people's eyes, but the camera's over to the left. So I'm not looking in your eye, but it's like, you're trying to look at each other. <laughs> um, I definitely like the, the idea of like a Twitch for Revit. I go back to like growing up where we'd be playing video games, chatting with friends. So you're doing a fun activity while you're talking on the side, which kind of segues to the podcast where you're driving or doing something else and you're listening in your ear, where now it's like the whole talk is the whole event, which is kind of a little, gets a little stagnant. Mm-hmm. Twitch for Revit competition. Mm-hmm. Have two people draw something that we, normally you'd think that's very similar. Right. And then who can do it faster than why did you do it that way? That's, I mean, that's, that's 15 minutes of content that I would, I would watch every single time. Oh yeah. I think it's trying to find a replace, like you, a couple of people have mentioned bars before conferences, like trying to replace that environment with something else that people want to do communally rather than just stare at each other's faces, you know, FaceTime. I mean, like, I don't know. It, I go back to also like instant messenger, instant messenger Damn. days of like, of like the chat room, you know, you hop in. Whoop. All right, go. <laughs> but you know, like that. In. Is that, yeah, a, is, that a, is that a near miss right there? Is that a near miss, Kyle? <laughs> uh, I, I'm on my phone. I have it like a uh, suction cup on the mirror here. But, you know, I, I just think trying to find like nice environments to, to get into and like, you know, because you learn, you engage more when you're having fun. That's what I've found. If it's just boring, I mean, they definitely tune out or I'm looking at a screen or so. Love to hear your thoughts. <laughs> 
I have to say, I, I would like to see a, a BIM group trivia and just mix in some like Star Trek stuff and just see what kind of outlandish stuff people know in this. Jonathan, room. you're taking notes for future podcast ideas, right? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> trivia <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, I, so here's a sort of a debate question for everyone at this point. You know, how do we define, you know, productive virtual engagement? Um, we have some great ideas already. But this is open to anyone, and I would love to hear from folks who haven't spoken up yet. And I'm not going to call on anyone in particular. I won't look. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, this is what's so great about having these small groups is, you know, the engagement that Sean mentioned. I, I think that's personal to everyone who participates, you know, whether you're looking to grow your business or whether you're just looking to learn some new technology or you know, what motivated you to participate in a particular event is, is going to be your own personal judgment as to whether it was um, beneficial or not. Yeah, as a content provider, you know, my take on whether it was uh, beneficial or not is going to be different than the person I'm trying to engage with. You know, to me, um, ultimately, if they can, if what I have to present to them in any way makes their life easier, better, more efficient, less frustrating, then it's a success. Um, so we might be on the same plane there, but any other aspect of that I think is going to be extremely uh, personal. And I'd like to hear from Caitlin. <laughs> Caitlin's getting called out. <laughs> Going off mute. Thanks for calling me out. No, I, I very much enjoyed this conversation so far. And candidly, I'm sitting here thinking maybe I, as, First of all, this is my very first round table with you guys. Uh, second, I'm thinking maybe I joined the wrong room. I didn't realize this was going to be focused so much on kind of content that's created for users in the construction industry, as opposed to I was thinking this was going to be more of, you know, like how can I get more engaged remote work within my teams? Um, so I guess I'll answer it from that perspective. Uh, for me, a productive engagement or is is almost reducing the amount of meetings that we have because like I said, we do we do work in, in sprints, right? And so I'm having daily standups with people or a lot of the work itself gets done with paired partnering programming, you know? So it's like, how can I ensure that shared understanding earlier on? That to me is productive engagement because yes, a lot of people in my company get Zoom fatigue and overwhelmed with just locked in meetings all day, always on the video. So for me, it's just, how can we, people have fun, but then we're still producing effective work at the end of the day. But also thanks for letting me sit in on this room. It's, it's been interesting. <laughs> now I have some podcasts to listen to. Well, and I think we were, we were actually thinking about the same thing though, Caitlin, is looking at it from that perspective of yeah. like, how do you get more engaged groups and that a lot of us are experiencing that Zoom fatigue. I mean, mine, I, I actually wanted to pivot. I don't know if we have enough time at some point, but you know, Rob, you asked about remote work policy, et cetera. And, and, and I have this problem, like it happened today. And I'm going to say it because we're recording, but, but like that, that also, I think changes the way people talk. Um, the fact that it's recorded all the time and you never know. And so we, we talk very uh, edited here and I'm not edited and I am so tired of people looking at my damn calendar and seeing a 30 minute window and putting some other damn thing on it. And I'm sitting there forever. And when you're talking about a policy, Rob, or you're talking about how we engage remote workers, like, isn't part of it having a little bit of a heart and understanding and giving some sort of boundary somewhere, some something? Can't we do that? Because uh, I can't last like this. I'm gonna be straight up. I'm not gonna make it. Um, so my life hack there, I will actually block out big chunks on my calendar so nobody can schedule a meeting over it. <laughs> So, I, need so to, I need that. to do that. I'm definitely. Not. <laughs> is don't share I'm in a meeting. Right. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Too right. <laughs> well, Sean, but to that, but to that thing, like there was that whole freaking transparency movement. So I had to share everything with everybody because I'm transparent. And I'm cool. And yeah, I'm not transparent, and I'm happier. <laughs> <laughs> I need a little bit I, more. Yeah, Sean. I've got I've got big blocks of my day to do this thing called work. It's it's amazing. <laughs> Okay, so we have like 50 seconds to that, but I think um, I think the other thing about, and I think Jeffy, you and I talked about this, we can't feel guilty, we have to give ourselves grace and just walk away and, 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 you know, really think about, you know, 
ourselves and put ourselves first. But um, with that, I want to, you know, quickly thank everyone. We're going to get pushed in about 30 seconds, but any last words from our subject matter experts? You have 30 seconds. I, I would just say real quick for, for Caitlin, who's like looking for more remote work. I, I don't think remote work and podcasting in that, in this terms are, are that much different. You know, get your camera on, have your microphone on, engage with people, call them out and, and laugh and, and have some of that grace. Yeah. Yeah. And I want to suggest little, little that we, we actually dig into Caitlin's next time too, because I'd love to dig in and bring a little bit more facts around that and have a little more fun with it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let's do that next month. We can do it. Absolutely. All right. We'll see you guys shortly in the uh, main group session. So uh, thank you. <laughs> thank How rude, man, that's just, man. <laughs> I, I agree. Oh, I think we got it in though. <laughs> <laughs> Practicing your summary recaps. That's like a whiplash from a car accident. Really, Nathan? Man, this, this is.